Do you know Christ? Do you see yourself in him? Christ is changing us every day so that we can become more and more like him that we may show the world how great our God is. Join me Ben Fetcher as we talk about this and much more every Thursday from 9:45 p.m. only on Wema TV. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching us from. This is Beholding Christ program and I am Ben Fetcher and I'm excited to be back here with you. And uh, this is a nice moment to share and to behold Christ. I say that beholding means to look attentively with the revelation. And that is what we are doing about Christ because we've realized that Christ is our identity. It is in him we live. That is what the Bible says in Acts. It is in him we live, we move, and we have our being. So the more we look unto him, the more we see him, the more we know him, the more we see ourselves in him, the more we know who we are because we are defined by him. Last time we looked at how the bronze serpent was lifted for the children of Israel. And when they looked at the bronze serpent, they were healed. And we saw that even us, we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of faith. Today, we turn into the book of Math, uh, Romans chapter 5. The book of Romans chapter 5, from, uh, verse 12. We mentioned this last time. And that is where we are going to begin about two identities that Every human being that is in this world is either in these two identities. You are either in the first Adam or in the last Adam. You are either in Adam or in Christ. Everyone who is not born again, you are born. And actually everyone, whether you're born again or not, everyone was born in the identity of the one man called Adam. Because we were born in the lineage or from the lineage of Adam. And we were born in sin. We were born in in trespasses we were born with a sinful nature not just sinful actions actually what causes sinful actions is the sinful nature it's not the sinful actions that brings the sinful nature it is the sinful act, uh, nature that causes sinful actions we are not sinners because we sin we are sinners because we were born in sin and we sin because we are sinners you get it that Yes, and how, where did we become sinners? Through Adam, the first Adam. But now, to those who go ahead and they receive Christ Jesus, to those who get born again, they, they are defined by, different, by a different Adam, the last Adam. That is what the Bible calls him in Corinthians chapter 15. He is the last Adam or the second Adam, whichever way you want to call him. Though there are so many debates about that, but he is Christ. Christ is our identity, those who are in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. So the, the identity of the men that are in Christ, those who have been translated and, tra and transferred from the first Adam through faith in Jesus Christ, they have been conveyed into a place called in Christ. And Anyone who is in Christ is a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. And which new do we talk about? The newness of life, which is Christ Jesus. And we say it, as he is, so are we in this world. Now, turn your Bible with me. The book of Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men. He says that it is through one man that sin entered into the world. It is not through you that sin entered. It is not through your grandmother that sin entered. It is not through your father that sin entered. You did not become sin because of what you did, even when you were a child. Though by nature you are sin, not because of your sinning actions, but because of one man through whom sin entered the world. Verse 12 of Romans 5, that through one man, sin entered the world, and, through, and death through sin. So the result of sin is death. And thus, death spread to all men, because all sinned. And this death that we are talking about here, actually the death that the Bible talks about is not necessarily the physical death. Actually, God does not necessarily uh, 
uh, acknowledge the physical death because God is not a, a, a physical being. He's, he does not have a, a, a physical body like you and I. So you can die physically, but according to God, you're still alive because you are connected with him. Like one day, Jesus with his disciples uh, heard of, this, of uh, the news about a guy called Lazarus. And Jesus told the disciples, let us go and wake one of us who is asleep. How can you say that we are going to raise one of us who is dead, yet we, uh, who is asleep, yet we know that he is dead? And Jesus told them, okay, let us go and raise him from the dead. But according to Jesus, in his godly perspective, he was not seeing him dead because God does not see as human beings see. So God saw him asleep. That is why Jesus told them, let us go and wake one of us who is asleep. So when he's talking about this death, he's not talking about physical death, but he's talking about spiritual death. So what is spiritual death? In Genesis, in the book of Genesis, in the Garden of Aden, God instructed Adam and Eve, and he told them that of every tree in this garden, you may eat, except from the tree in the middle of the garden, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. On the day you eat, you'll surely die. So my question, did they die? Well, According to human, humanly perspective, they didn't die immediately because we still, them, we still see them existing even years after the Garden of Eden. But according to God, they died. That is why when God showed up, as he used to show up in the, in the cool of the day as it is written, the guys were nowhere to be seen. So God came asking, Adam, where are you? So I've always uh, made fun of that. I like, do not think that like Adam, I mean God, could not see Adam, and Adam was hiding behind the bush. So does it mean God could not see behind the bush? And we know that God is all-knowing, and he is, uh, he is omnipresent. In other words, he is present everywhere. So why did God ask, Adam, where are you? Was he not seeing him? Yes. And you ask, how? Okay. God is a spirit, and he had created Adam and Eve, and they used to relate with him in the spiritual frequency, in the level of God. But when they disobeyed God, when they rebelled through unbelief, they didn't believe in what God had told them. What happened is that as Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, they fell short of the glory. They fell short of the frequency. So where they used to relate with God in the frequency, the frequency of the spirit, the frequency of God. When God came in the, into the garden that, that special day, he couldn't find them. Why? Because they had fallen short of the glory. They had fallen short of the place of the presence of God. They had fallen short of the place of fellowship with God. So God asked Adam, where are you? And Adam said, we realize that we are naked and we hid ourselves. So. God asked them, who told you you are naked? Praise God. That is a topic for another day. We look at that another day. But so Romans chapter 5 verse 12 is talking about death. And I'm taking you back to Genesis to show you something about this death. This death means separation from God. So when God asked them, where are you? He saw them dead because they were separated from his presence. They were separated by sin and disobedience from his presence. Uh, from his glory. They were separated. They had fallen short of the glory of the frequency. So where they used to relate with God in the cool of the day, where they used to relate with God, to fellowship with God, to enjoy the presence of God, they could no longer enjoy because they had fallen short. And that is what we call spiritual death. And that is what God calls death. God does not refer the physical death as death. He calls it as be, uh, sleeping. That is why Jesus, when he was going to raise, uh, to raise Lazarus from the dead, he told them, we are going to, ra uh, to raise one of us who is asleep. So according to God, what you call the physical death is falling asleep. But the most serious death, death according to God's point of view, is being separated from him. And that is what happened in the Garden of Aden when Adam and Eve sinned. So they sinned, verse 12, where we were. So through that man, Adam, sin entered into the world. There was no sin before. Sin was not known before. But through that disobedience and unbelief, sin entered into the world. In other words, man became an opening for sin to come into the world. Then he says, and death through sin. So the result of sin was death. 
And what did we say death is? Separation from God. So for the first time, man lived a life separated from God. And after that, we saw him being chased away, uh, being chased out of the Garden of Eden. So he fell short and was separated with God. So the result of sin is separation from God. So that is how death spread to all men because all sinned. Praise be to God. So death or separation from God spread to all men. So everyone that was born and everyone that is born after the lineage of Adam is born with and in sin which leads to separation from God. Praise be to God. So that is by one man. So the identity that was brought by that one man is the identity of sin. So my, my brother and my sister, you do not become a sinner because you sinned, but you became a sinner because your father, not your biological father, but your father where you draw your identity from, that is Adam, sinned and he spread that sin. So we inherited sin from the first Adam. Praise be to God. So that is to say, it is not because you stole someone's property that you became a sinner. It is not because you uh, you lied that you became a sinner. It is not because you didn't uh, give your offering that you become a sinner. It is not because of what you did. It is not because you committed adultery that you became a sinner. It is not because you robbed that you became a sinner. Actually, you become a sinner because of Adam, because you inherited the sinful nature. And now you rob because you are a sinner, but you don't rob to become a sinner. You rob because, because you are a sinner. Praise be to God. And that is the identity we got from Adam, the first Adam. So anyone who is not born again, that is how you are defined. Praise be to God. And it is not a good way to be defined because you are defined as a man who is separated from God. I want us to take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay there. Do not change. Stay there. We'll be back shortly. For the wages of sin is death. The result of sin, the, the only way to appreciate sin is by death. And what is death? Being separated from God. When Adam brought sin into the world, what came with it is death. Through Christ, the second Adam, we are declared justified. Welcome back. We have said that the man who is not born again draws his identity from the first Adam. And that Adam brought the issue of separation from God. But that is not the good news. That is not good news to anyone. Telling you that you are a sinner is not good news. Telling you that you are separated from God is not good news. Telling you that you have no place with God. God is still asking, where are you? Imagine, for those people who have not received Christ, God is still asking, where are you? God cannot see you in his, in his realm. Actually, according to God's uh, realm, they are kind of dead because God cannot see you outside Christ. And we are coming to that. Now, Romans 5, verse 12, we've read that. Now, verse 13 says, For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed, we'll come to that at another time. Let us jump to verse 15 it says, but the free gift is not like the offense. Okay, verse uh, 14 says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is typed and uh, who is a type of him who was to come. So death continued to reign uh, from Adam to the time of the Lord. Death was reigning. Death, separation from God. So man was not in union with God. All along, from Adam to Moses, praise be to God, death reigned. Then he says, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense, many died. By the one man's offense, which man? Adam, the first Adam. Because of his offense, many died or many are separated from God. Much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. He talks... He introduces to us about the free gift. And he says that as a result of one man's offense, many were considered dead and actually they are still separated from God. So all men, 
drawing their identity from Adam, they are separated from God. They have no fellowship with God. They are considered dead. But he introduces something here. He says the free gift. It's amazing. He, he talks about a gift and he says it is free. We all know that gifts should be free. But he emphasizes that the free gift of God. <laughs> Amen. This is wonderful. That the free gift of God is not like the offense. So what the offense or what the sin of Adam cost or what was resulted by the sin of Adam cannot even come near or even be compared to the free gift. Praise be to God. What Adam lost what Adam caused man to experience as a result of disobedience and unbelief cannot in no way come near what God has done through Jesus Christ. Now he says, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. He says much more. So the gospel and when you talk about beholding Christ, it's beholding the much more. The much more what? What Adam lost cannot be compared. Now we have much more. And he says much more, the grace of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, the masses of God. Much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man. So now he comes and introduces to us another man. The first Adam cost a big mess. But the last Adam, which is Christ Jesus, brought in the solution. And he brought in life. Let's continue and see. Verse 16. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. So this gift which comes through the second man or through the last Adam, which is Christ, is not like that which came through the one who sinned. So what the one who sinned, that is Adam, what he caused to humanity cannot be compared to what this last Adam, to what this Christ brings as a gift to humanity. Notice he says it is a gift, not a reward. What is the difference between a gift and a reward? A reward is something that you, you receive after you have maybe done something good. For example, we have our, in Kenya, we have the athletes who go for the, the, the races. When they run and they win, they are given rewards. What they are given is not a gift, it's a reward because it is a reward, a reward to thank him and to congratulate them for what they have done. But a gift... A gift, it's not something that you are given because of what you've done, but it's something you receive from a person who loves you. For example, uh, maybe when you have your, your, your birthday party, you have friends and people who love you. They come with gifts. They don't come with rewards. They're not rewarding you. They are giving you gifts because they love you. A gift comes from the place of love, but a reward is a necessity for your good works. I hope you understand that. So now he says, and he comes with a gift because it's not something we work for. Receiving Christ and being made as Christ is not something we work for. It is a gift, he says. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. So what Adam did and what he, result, he, he brought us into is something we call condemnation condemnation is to where you are judged and you are found guilty and you deserve punishment so the sin of adam brought judgment brought condemnation romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death the wages of sin is death so the result of sin the the only way to appreciate sin is by death and what is death being separated from God. So anywhere you see sin, the next thing is death. So when Adam brought sin into the world, what came with it is death. Being condemned, being declared that you are unfit. You don't stand to be accepted. You are far from being accepted by God. That was the result of Adam. Uh, verse, uh, verse 16, it says, But the free gift which came from 
which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Now he says that what Christ brought, the second Adam, the second man, through uh, the second man whom we have an identity in, that is Christ. What he brought is the free gift and with the free gift comes justification. Two legal words that have been introduced to us. The first one is condemnation. The second one is justification. We look into that very soon. But condemnation is to be declared unfit, to be declared unworthy, to be declared not allowed to stand before God. So when we were born into this world, we were born with a sinful nature because of Adam. Not because of what you did, but because of Adam. So we were born into this world in sin as sinners. So we were declared unfit. We were declared not accepted. We were declared not worthy to stand before God. Why? Because all the wages of sin is death. So you and I, because of Adam, we deserved death. And what is death? To be separated from God. And actually, for many years, some of us have lived separated from God. But now he talks, he talks about the free gift. He says, the gift now brings the issue of justification. So Adam, through Adam, we are condemned. We are declared unfit. But through Christ, the second Adam, we are declared justified. So what is to be justified? To be, to be declared accepted. To be declared worthy. To be declared fit. Praise be to God. So if you are in Christ, if you are in Christ, your identity is in him. So you have been declared fit. You have been declared worthy. You have been declared worthy to stand in the presence of God. To be justified is to be considered as if you have never sinned. Just as, I, as if I have never sinned. That is to be justified. And that is a result of of the second Adam, which is Christ, in whom we have our, our identity. Remember, this is beholding Christ. When we see him, we see our justification. Let's see. Verse 17 says, For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, through one man's disobedience, this is the first Adam, which we were named after before we believed in the gospel. So through this one man, death reigned through that man. Mm. Hallelujah. Much more. I love when the Bible talks about much more because it is talking about something that you cannot do to earn. Something that you cannot deserve. Even if you are given a million years to deserve this, it is impossible to get it because it is a gift from God. He says much more. Those who receive, number one, those who receive abundance of grace. So what do you do with a gift? If I come to your birthday party with a gift, the only thing you can do is not to ask me how much it costed me. It is, you know, there are some people you, uh, you, give, you give people uh, gifts and they start asking you, ah, oh, this is too much, this is too expensive, you should not have gone all that way. No, you that is being given the gift, you should not ask about the price of that gift because the price lies with the one who is giving you the gift. And he sees, according to him, you deserve that gift. So in the same way, he says that much more those who receive. So the only thing you can do with a gift is to receive, not to work for it, not even to do anything about it. So we receive the balance of grace. Grace is not, what is, what is grace? Grace is not worked for. It is the unmerited favor. It is the undeserved thing. So you cannot do anything. It is not by your prayers, my friend. It is not by your tithing, my friend. It is not by your commitment to your church, my friend. It is not about anything you can do. It is all about him. And he says, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So with Adam, there came sin and condemnation and death. And through Jesus Christ, we receive abundance of grace. Hallelujah. Abundance of grace. In other words, you receive what you don't deserve. This is beyond mercy. This is beyond everything that you have ever had. It's called the gift of the grace of God. John 1.17 says that he came, he, he is full of grace and truth. Praise be to God. And now he says, those who receive, what is your work? To receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness. Wow. The free gift of righteousness. Righteousness now is something we can receive. 
Hallelujah. I'm excited about this. And you also should be excited about it because it defines who you are because of the second Adam. We shall pick it from there next time. I call you blessed because indeed you are. I remind you this is beholding Christ and we talk about and see Jesus alone for in him we live, we move and we have our being. You are blessed. Thank you very much for watching.